Hello, then many thanks for keeping us company. This is why in the morning, glad you chose to be part of us. And in our political uh, segment this morning, we are looking into the general outlook of our economy. We want to see where we are as a nation. We have problems that need to be solved with speed, especially uh, having in mind we need to have a budget come uh, June this year. I'm joined in set or in studio by uh, an economist. I have... Uh, Job Mogira, he's a research economist. I am also joined by uh, Thomas Obare, he's an economist and also a young uh, student who will say he represents a big number of people out here who want to see how else even the youth can be involved in the building of our economy. Keep it Y254 in the morning. You can also uh, send us all your questions, or your remarks on all our social media platforms. Uh, the handles are 254 channel. Welcome to the broadcast. My name is Dereva Hilary. Now, uh, just a preview of something. This is um, an article that was published uh, last in August, uh, February 8th of 2019. That is last year. Now, uh, Kenya is the economic, uh, financial, and uh, transport hub of East Africa. Kenya's real GDP growth has uh, average of 5% for the last decade. Now, since 2014, Kenya has been ranked as a lower middle income country because its per capita uh, GDP crossed a World Bank threshold, while Kenya has a growing uh, entrepreneurial middle class and the steady growth, its economic uh, development has been impaired by the weak governance and corruption. We all know about this. Uh, though reliable numbers are hard to find, unemployment and unemployment are extremely high and could, could be near 40% of the population. Now, uh, Job, if this statement is something to go by as we speak today as a nation, can we afford to smile economically? Oh, well, thank you, Hilary. Uh, I don't believe we have so many reasons to smile as a country economically, because there are so many challenges. You know, my, I'm an economist by training, and my perspective of economy is alleviation of poverty, the distribution of resources well. Why do we distribute resources to alleviate poverty? Are Kenyans poor? Are, for example, the youths poor? And the answer is yes. So we don't have so much we can smile about economically, but still there is some hope. Obare. Are you proud of our economy? No, I'm not. Actually, in that report, you've said that we are a lower middle income economy. But when you take GDP and the per capita you are talking about that brings about the lower middle income, you could hold the, microphone. the lower middle income, I think it is a lie. In Kenya, the spread of in terms of economic development is very wide. Mm -hmm. You realize that the rich are very few, but they're extremely rich. Mm -hmm. And then those who are poor, there's so many, mm -hmm. but they are, when you take now the, the division, when you're coming up with the per capita that brings the middle income, mm -hmm. you, you, you see you take all the resources. Mm -hmm. So you cannot use that to measure how Kenya has developed economically. Mm -hmm. That is one thing that we really need to look into. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, now uh, Felix, uh, Job has uh, said here the youths do not have uh, <coughs> something. Maybe you could tell us. <laughs> <laughs> now, are, are you happy with the current economy of our country? No, I, I definitely can't be happy with an economy where 50% <coughs> of which are youth, because uh, in this country more than 50% uh, consists of youth. And uh, when this 50%, in fact, almost 99.9% .9 of them don't have jobs. What reason do I have to smile? I don't have any reason to smile. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Now, Job, agriculture remains the backbone of our economy. We still have farmers crying out, tea farmers, coffee farmers, maize farmers, they are all crying out because poor payment or no payment at all. We've had issues. Actually, the whole of last year, we had problems with the payment of our farmers and especially in the tea sector. And these are some of the uh, key issues or key and paramount areas that uh, will support our economy. Speaking even of the livestock, because even uh, the dairy farming is most important. Moving into this new year or this financial year, what should be done? 
Well, I think I started by saying uh, we don't have so much to smile about as a country, about our economy. But remember, my last word in the first uh, response was still there is hope. Because I believe the part where I'm seeing hope is the immense potential that Kenya has as an economy. We are ranked 62nd worldwide in terms of uh, the size of our economy. But now again, when you go to the uh, per capita income, we are one, I think around 140 is there. So what shifts us uh, like uh, 60 positions or 80 positions from 62nd to 140 something. And uh, now when it comes to agriculture, you, uh, you realize agriculture forms like a third, that is something percent, around 33 percent of our GDP. Uh, but the sector has been killed. Remember the hope here is on the potential, mm -hmm. but the potential here is being killed daily. Number one, uh, by those who are supposed to regulate the agricultural industry. Mm -hmm. And number two, again now, I'll come to the, to the, to the youths. Uh, 33% is agriculture in terms of contribution to GDP, but how many youths do we have in agriculture? Mm -hmm. Very few, yeah, very and they are not even interested in joining agriculture. Uh, most of the learning institutions in Kenya are around big cities, and when the youths finish school there, they don't want to go back where there is agricultural land. They want to stay in uh, Nairobi, Mbawe, in Aitwa, Shambala, Mawe. So, mm -hmm. kule ambapo kuna udongo we, wenye rutuba nzuri mm -hmm. ya kufanya agriculture, youths awataki kuenda huko. Yeah, exactly. So, we need to send more youths there. All the youths need to be willing. Those who identified the opportunities went there and they are making it. Mm -hmm. But again now, corruption. The government has allowed mm -hmm. so many people. And uh, by government here, I don't mean the GOK or the GK. Mm -hmm. I mean Kenyans. The government is us. Sure. It's our neighbors who are heading those agricultural institutions, our neighbors mm -hmm. who are handling all the regulations, our friends, our parents. Mm -hmm. So. I think uh, we need to seal all loopholes in, uh, in uh, the agricultural sector that propagate corruption such that uh, milk is bought at 19 shillings from the farmers and here Kwashamba Lamawe Nairobi to Nainunua na 100 per liter. It doesn't make sense. This is the cost of production. Uh, the cost of production, uh, if that's the case, mm -hmm. then the farmer should be selling at a higher price, not 19 shillings or 30 shillings. Then here we buy at 100 shillings. The value addition to milk is very cheap. Pasteurization is uh, five shillings per liter. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, for example, mm, the transport cannot even come to 10 shillings per liter. So why do we add a whole 80, 90 shillings mm -hmm. to one liter of milk? Mm -hmm. So I think uh, this year, farmers need to know their rights. Yeah. I would rather they stop producing. Okay. Uh, Oh, but other than uh, what he has mentioned about uh, uh, see the production of milk and uh, other factors, what else do you think ails our agricultural sector? I will say uh, we have a problem with the value addition mm -hmm. in that you find, uh, like in the tea sector, mm -hmm. you find we produce tea, but the value addition when it has been done, mm -hmm. the cost of tea at the port of Mombasa and the cost of the, the price that one inch is paid on the ground mm -hmm. are extremely different. Mm -hmm. You find, uh, like, the, the, the last December we had the bonus, where you could find, uh, like, in uh, my region where I come from, we were earning around 12 to 14 shillings. Mm -hmm. But in Mombasa, you find tea is sold at around 160 per kg. Mm -hmm. So there is, I, I don't know, he said about corruption. I don't know whether to blame corruption on what is happening in the agricultural sector, mm -hmm. but really something is wrong because you cannot explain how tea is 160 in Mombasa and then the farmer is paid 14 shillings mm -hmm. even if it's value addition even if it's the cost of production mm -hmm. there is something that needs to be done really through the agricultural sector because this is Kenya we are not a manufacturing country we are an agricultural country mm -hmm. and we need to take our sector seriously because this is what provides the bulk of our employment to the population of Kenya. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Now, uh, Felix, uh, Job has mentioned something very interesting, and this is in regards to the youth. 
they don't want to come to, <coughs> they don't want to go back to the villages where we have Shamba, they want to be here in the city. And uh, we, we have a scenario or we have a, a devolved system where now we're having universities back in our homes and in our counties, that is. But like he has mentioned, indeed, it's true, no, no one wants to go back to the, uh, to the village. They, want, they all want us to be in Nairobi or other cities in this country. Other than um, Raha and everything else, what makes young people not want to go back to the villages? Okay, thank you very much. To begin with, um, I'm my fourth year doing horticulture. So this topic is, uh, is much in favor of me. Mm -hmm. So I have much to say about agriculture because uh, it's something that uh, we've not been taking seriously. And to begin with, I'll, I'll have to take the blame to the government. That's the first. Because uh, I did my attachment in county government and I had an ob observation. Almost everybody employed by the county government is of 50 and above. Okay. There is nobody 40 years and below. Okay. When asked around, I think nobody has an answer because youths are not being employed into the agricultural sector. Go, in, in fact, find facts right now. There is no young person. In fact, it's right now that they're trying. Mm -hmm. They're trying to employ youths. Mm -hmm. it, it's like they, they stopped employing you young people in 1990s and now when you go there you find people of 60 70 80. it's like they don't want these people to to retire i don't know what's happening in the agricultural sector it's like now we are studying and you don't know where you are going because nobody is retiring nobody is giving space for the youth to get there on matters of youth going back to the village no it's not true because uh, like me mm, I'll say that when we are given favorable conditions, because you, you can't go there and you go there and do nothing. Right. Yeah, you must go there to do something. So when, so when there is something to be done, and now this is where we, 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 we tell the county governments mm -hmm. to be much more serious on matters of agriculture. Mm -hmm. When you give us favorable conditions, when you give us everything, now we'll come up with the, we'll come back with what, whatever we've been learning from the city, and then we come and implement it back at home. But when we are here and we see there is nothing serious going back at home, we'll, we'll rather remain in the city. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. Now that you're in this space, yeah. uh, what do you produce and what are some of the challenges you face? Because now we will have first-hand information. <coughs> yeah. In, uh, horticulture deals with uh, vegetables, fruits, and flowers. Uh, flower production is uh, from fa from uh, data. Kenya is uh, one of the leading nations in flower production worldwide. In terms of fruits, Kenya has been uh, very poor. We've, we've done poorly in terms of fruit production because you find uh, a larger percentage of fruits comes from South Africa. For us, we produce food fruits that are consumed locally, and when you when you analyze and you try and see the qualities are of are a little lower mm -hmm. more so in tropical fruits like uh, grapes like uh, let's say grapes pears we have very little quality we have uh, lower quality and uh, on that we can say that uh, our climate maybe doesn't favor growth of these and now these were where the modern technology kind of agriculture, like the greenhouses and everything comes in handy. But uh, we can say that there's much to be done on in terms of uh, agri in the agricultural sector, more so in the horticulture. And uh, I, I just hope, I just hope you're going to get better. Okay, before I let you go, you mentioned of a low production. Is it because that uh, no, uh, there are, there are no majority in this area, and if they are, uh, are we having problems in uh, pro, uh, assistance in the farm produce? Is this is it that is that the case? Yeah, the, the case of low production first is brought about by little or no information or no no farmers don't know how to grow these things. But you know things like uh, these. Uh, Temperate, temperate fruits. Mm -hmm. They are very delicate, and handling them, in fact, from growth, from the 
time you grow them until you package them mm -hmm. is very critical. And now you find that these people are growing them traditionally. They don't have any idea on how to grow them. And now there are things that, uh, according to international standards, you have to, there's a stipulated way. And now when you get them to the market, we found that our avocados or like our fruits, every fruit, they are rejected okay. from the market. Now it's, uh, I blame it on lack of, of information on how to grow them. All right, uh, I want us now to talk about tourism because it's another area that contributes so much in our economy. And uh, uh, Job. Yes. Uh, about the economy of our country and tourism being the key aspect, we have had issues of um, terrorist attacks that have affected our country. And even as we speak, uh, just last week a few things were happening. Uh, gladly or fortunately, it never happened in the hotels. But now this is something that worries our nation because if it happens again, then that means moving into this financial year, we will have a problem. Uh, would you say our tourism has tried and if it hasn't, what should be done? Well, uh, tourism has generally been doing well and uh, the ministry does a lot of advertisement, magical KE, i will say they are trying mm -hmm. in terms of marketing the country. And as a country, we are blessed with uh, so <coughs> many geographical features, wildlife and such. And the contribution by tourism is not as high as agriculture, but still, to some extent, it has been a bit constant, save for a few years when uh, there were so many security threats. And uh, currently, you know, Al-Shabaab have started uh, maybe intensifying their attacks, maybe because of our political, the global politics. But again, I would like to commend our forces. Uh, they've really done uh, not the maximum they could do, but they've really done a lot. Like yesterday, there was an attack, and uh, they managed to neutralize so many enemies. And as such, it, uh, we could see it's a boost to our tourism industry. Mm -hmm. Because anybody who is uh, moving around the country as a tourist, either domestic tourists or foreign tourists, mm -hmm. these are people who are very keen about their security. And the tourism is about relaxing and enjoying. You wouldn't like to come and uh, enjoy or relax in a place where you're not sure of your security. So in terms of security, we are trying, but still, uh, we can do much. Again, now, uh, you know, the economy is always intertwined. Mm -hmm. So if Kenyans do not have money, foreign uh, tourists may come in, but we need the domestic tourists to boost the earnings for tourism. So we need to work on all sectors so that each sector supports the other sectors. Some sectors are enablers of other, of other sectors. True. Like we need people, Kenyans, to have money in their pockets. Kama una do, nezenda masai mara saizi. Yeah, so we need to first of all encourage even local tourism, which now means our economy needs to improve. Uh, Wacha tuseme Felix up after Kampo apate. Mahali Joba Makashamba, Apande Maua. Mm. The first bonus, he may decide to go to Masai Mara. Mm. You see, up at a boost. Yeah. So that mm. is it. But we are trying in terms of tourism, mm -hmm. but we, there is still mm. a lot to be done. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Obare, yes. are young people investing? Are we investing into a series and uh, projects that will enable us to? contribute to the economy of our nation? The young generation will be known as a generation of party after party. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you that young people out here are investing, more so in terms of technology. You realize even the apps that are being created, mm -hmm. they are being created by a young generation. Mm -hmm. So we cannot really say that young people are not uh, investing. Mm -hmm. uh, in as much as the population of people who are investing is low, mm -hmm. but young people are investing. And the most important thing we can do right now is to urge these young people, most of those who are either in formal or informal employment, mm -hmm. that at least make savings. Make savings so that with the time you can be able to, to invest in, in a serious business. And then another thing, we need to share out information. Financial in literacy is somehow low. You tell somebody to invest, you look at you and say, life is too short. 
why don't we party? So we need to do away with that attitude mm -hmm. of party after party and encourage people, young people more so to save. Because savings, uh, my colleague here, my senior, can agree with me that without savings, we will not move as a nation. We have to encourage young people to save more mm. and spend less. Mm. Yes. Uh, very true. Uh, Felix, without <coughs> money, we can't travel at Wizienda Masaimara. Uh, we can't also uh, uh, be able to make other wheels of life move. Uh, I want to uh, have a question on you in regards to your sector. You said you're in horticulture. Yeah. Are you mentoring young people in your field? Because these are people we'll be looking f forward to helping us improve our economy because we are badly off. Are you mentoring people? Uh, how are you creating awareness? Ama wewe tu ulipatanjia lafu. Right now, we are, we are still trying. We were in the process uh -huh. of mentorship. Maujaiva. Yeah. Okay. Kamli yeah. is the one who means it. All right. Now, I, I, I want us to move a little bit to a heavy gear now. Big for agenda. It is one of the uh, some uh, agendas that uh, critics said it was so ambitious. Uh, we have industrialization and manufacturing. Problems, the 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 they intertwin from agriculture coming into manufacturing uh, we are looking into industrialization we are having problems youths are not employed we have uh, people out there crying as a, as a as a nation we want to achieve big four agenda by the end of this year because 2022 and 2021 is only terms of campaigns we all know it has to happen that's how it is but now speaking of the big four agenda can we achieve? No, no, I think uh, <coughs> we will not achieve. Mm -hmm. One thing I would like to say, the Big Four agenda was well thought of. Food security, Kenya <coughs> Kishiba, mm -hmm. I think everything else will flow. Because even uh, the, the rates of crime eh, come uh, around as a result of empty stomachs. Mm -hmm. So food security, perfect. Mm -hmm. Universal health care, where are we? Nowhere. Tell the same people, I, I also work for the government. Mm -hmm. Tell people who work for the government to go to government hospitals where the big four agenda is being implemented on universal health care. Mm -hmm. They won't go. Because again, not the government, but Kenyans who work in those hospitals are lazy. Mm -hmm. They are corrupt. Uh, drugs are being uh, brought in by government. Then uh, people in hospitals steal those drugs. Mm -hmm. And they take it to their private chemists. Mm -hmm. So, Unaenda Hosi, Piriton utawai kosa. Mkebea 1,000 tablets ni sombili. So, uh, Piriton you will get aspirin, sijui kama ilipotea kidogo, but parasita mautapata. Mm -hmm. But now come to any uh, drugs that should be taken under prescription. There is nowhere. Funny enough, these people know the chemist mm -hmm. where you will find it. Mm -hmm. So how do we... And even the labs to carry your tests. Exactly. They will yeah. refer you to some specific places. Go to those places then study the person who operates in that thing for two days. You will find them in the hospital where there were no drugs. Mm -hmm. So universal health care, without us handling uh, the corruption in hospitals, we may not achieve. Food security, mm -hmm. floods zimekuja juzi. They swept people. Mm -hmm. Has the government built any dams to collect this water? The dams we are building are from the small rivers that we have. That's... I let Shangwe, what you say, Mehivio. The thing here is, eh, for example, if uh, the, the young people who are very ambitious and such are given opportunities, I would encourage them to, to build dams that will, correct, that, that will collect rainwater, mm -hmm. not uh, waters from rivers, mm -hmm. uh, manufacturing. Uh, my friend here is talking about uh, youths are investing. Well, the, the things you need to do as a youth activist is ask the government to make the environment friendly for you to do business. I'm also a youth, but it's Jagonga 35. So, so, so <laughs> mix. Uh, then, uh, th that's manufacturing. Health, I've touched on uh, the massive corruption that is there. Manufacturing, the environment is totally unfriendly mm -hmm. to young people. Look at all the taxes that KRA has implemented. Well, they are good, but we would be willing to pay taxes as youths if we are seeing returns mm -hmm. of what the taxes we are paying. Mm -hmm. Now, saizi, biashara kidogo saizi. Tuseme biashara ya mpesa. 
Pick one county in Nairobi as a youth. How much capital do you need to invest? Mm -hmm. First of all, lazima ulipe kanjo. Exactly. Your permit. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you in one of the counties I know, it's 8,000. Your charge, MPS imekuwa classified as a financial institution in some of the finance acts mm -hmm. in these counties. So these young people, kwanza 8K, labda ulikuwa na kakapital ka 10K. 8100, okay. imeenda kwa permit. Uh, then, vitu zingine, simply, business environment and manufacturing for young people mm -hmm. is not there. Uh, look at the way small companies are being killed. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a certain capital, we are going to be able to get it. So, uh, they, how yeah, do we... They will not come through. Exactly. How do we manufacture food security to make a maneno ya maji? There was so, also housing. The, the, yeah, the issue of housing, mm -hmm. uh, thank God uh, the 1.5% uh, remittances has not yet gone through. Okay, I'll say dear kidogo hapo ikasimamishwa. Because now, uh, utulipe 1.5% of our salaries. Are we guaranteed mm -hmm. to get these houses? Look at the government houses. I I'll say this without fear. If your relatives did not work for government, if your friends did not work for government, you, you do not have, you don't stay in a government house. These houses zinachua watu na goodwill. Saizi wambiwe ndio wishi nyumba ya reli, uko rilu izama mahali kuingine za Kenya Power, or any other as a Minister of Health, that matters a National Housing Corporation, you need a friend who was living there, akuwache na goodwill ya 400k. 400k yenda ushago mwaga mawe, Nairobi ishi kwa bedsita. Yeah, so which housing are you talking about? <laughs> okay, now, uh, Obare, we have, we have uh, the newly uh, opened uh, Lamu port yes. in terms of Lapset. We yes. have the SGR now moving from Naiva uh, Nairobi to Naivasha, uh, <coughs> that's the cargo. Uh, these are some of the key projects that came to support our economy. And we're also speaking of the debts that we have. How then do we, do we harmonize all these together? ensuring that uh, we have people employed, we have money being generated, and we are, being, we are able to pay our debts in time. Uh, first of all, to start the SGR, I don't really know what to say about it, but I can tell you that it is a project that will take us a long time for us to recover from the debt that we got ourselves into. You realize that the amount of revenue being generated by SGR in itself cannot pay that loan. Mm -hmm. uh, the Lamu port, it's a good idea. If Lamu port and the Northern Corridor, mm -hmm. corridor are opened, mm -hmm. there is a lot of employment that is going to be created by that uh, project. Mm -hmm. And that will open up our economy to Bo Rwanda, Ethiopia, and all these other East African countries. Mm -hmm. That in itself will create employment. employment. Mm -hmm. My friend talked about, just to deviate a little, my friend has talked about the Big Four agenda. The Big Four agenda was a well thought out plan. But the only advice I can give to the government, with all those plans, the only thing that Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta can leave as a legacy is not the Big Four. Let him fight corruption. Mm -hmm. By fighting corruption, all these things will f fit in place. He talked about dams. Yes, we've set aside money for dams, but where is the money? It gets into people's projects. We, people's pockets. We, we set so much resources to, uh, to build our economy, but because of corruption, these resources get into people's pockets, the high. And then it also now brings the gap between the rich and the poor, it, all, it widens it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because if, you can't tell me that somebody steals a billion. A billion, you, you can imagine what a billion can do. And somebody has the courage to steal more than one billion, he himself. Mm -hmm. So if we can implement the laws in place, and then we can uh, also do away with this corruption thing, our country will grow. With the, the projects that the government is implementing, some are tenable, some are not. Like the transfer of the port from Mombasa to Naivasha, mm -hmm. you know, they'll kill the economy of Mombasa. Mm -hmm. Mombasa is already having its problems. We have the MRC, we have youths, mm. we've Wakali seen, Kwanza. Wakali Kwanza. Wakali Kwanza. We've seen the, the things that are happening in Mombasa. Mm. They are complaining that there are no jobs. Mm. Now imagine they have transferred uh, the, the cargo from Mombasa to Naivasha. Mm. You can imagine what will happen to Mombasa. So 
some of these policies really need to be thought out well before they are implemented. Mm. Yes. All right, uh, the same issue I want to come to Felix with, with it. <coughs> uh, when the SGR came and the, it was said that the cargo will be moving through the SGR, so many drivers lost their jobs. Now, uh, the, the owners of the trailers are now like, where do we take these trucks? We can't move them. We, we have a problem. And I'm sure majority of those people are young people when you all come into that sector. How, how, how can we now move forward? to ensure that now uh, we have to fight our space. No more driving uh, from Mombasa to Naivasha, but we still have hope to come Mombasa to Malaba before SGR Kisumu Ingiane. Mm. So those are the people who come to this side. But also how else other than that sector, because that could be a door closed. How else can young people now venture to <coughs> other businesses? It's evident. Youths are suffering everywhere. <laughs> it's like we are the unfortunate of all generations. Mm -hmm. So it's, a, it, it's, it's quite a sensitive matter because uh, it's a matter where when someone loses, someone gains. Mm -hmm. When uh, those who are in the trans, in the <coughs> those who are driving those trailers or those who are operating those trailers lose, the SGR is gaining. And now the government is trying to gain, the government is trying to recover the money they used during building the SGR at the expenses of innocent Kenyans, Kenyans who are trying to get a living for themselves, losing their jobs. Now, what I'm saying is that uh, the government is trying. Yes, they are trying to recover the money, but where is it going? In Kenya, what we lack is uh, self-discipline. That's the first thing. It's a matter of uh, Serikali meleta to chuk to cool. I'm sure SGR ma, uh, revenue is generated, right? But a higher percentage is going somewhere. Okay, I'm sure of that. Mm. What I can just say, the government should just come up over an over over better way of the port of Mombasa, or, or, or even of the rather port of every. In fact. The SGR should be benefiting as well as the truck drivers and everybody. Yeah. There's, there's no way they can try, they can do away with the trucks mm -hmm. and they are the turn boys and they are the drivers and everybody who have been uh, benefiting from these things. On, I, I want to go back to the, to the matter, to the, to, the, to the question you asked him, all about implementation. Kenya has, uh, in fact, Kenya has, we have very many, very, very many proposals, very many policies. They are just in the records. Tunazipeana, tunazichukua, tunasomewa, tunacheka, tunasmile. They are good. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to implementation, kila kitu inaenda chini. Okay. Yeah? You know, we choose wrong people into government offices. They come to us with promises. Tunawachagua, wanaenda pale, wanatupia hopes. 90% of them as a queen implement uh, as as a lady mm -hmm. so it all starts with us okay who are we choosing to those offices right. and now this is where tunafaa to quit na elimishana sababu mimi mwenyewe i know what i want right mtu nyumbani hajui ni nini anataka yeah someone will come from nairobi with money with everything with the lessons and everything anaenda huko anakuwa mp anakuja nairobi wanatengeneza hizi everything after no, you, story in Asia. Asia. <laughs> now we, we, are, we are running out yeah. of time, but I want us to finish with a very weighty matter. Uh, we, we do not have uh, the Auditor General Mwenye Tuneza Sema, he is the one. And uh, now, uh, counties they have to remit their uh, accounts to be uh, audited. We have uh, the uh, assembly. Uh, National Assembly and we have the County Assembly, they have to submit all this for us to be able to know in the next financial year what will be our budget, will we be able to pay it. But now we have a crisis. And a big one. The 17 guys who, are, who, are, who fronted themselves for the position, wali <laughs> kataliwa. So what happens? So the question is, eh, at once up kwa 17 guys, some of them were deputies to Ouko, mm -hmm. who is the former Auditor General. Right. 
Do you, and the, we believe he was working well, and it's up in the public domain. Mm -hmm. Do you mean he was deputized by quacks? It's but, a but lie. The, uh, okay, they, they need someone with ten, uh, 10 years experience according to the constitution. I don't know whether no, it was but, experience but, but or something else. I know some of those people. <laughs> I, I have seen their names and I know where they, some of them have been working uh, in, in charge of uh, their mm -hmm. audit departments in their whatever. Mm -hmm. About the Auditor General, mm -hmm. uh, I have a very simple comment. Any constitutional mistake, mm -hmm. any constitutional omission that Kenya makes mm -hmm. is very expensive to the common mwana inchi. Right. Again now, look here, the Auditor General is not there. Counties have been stealing when he was in office. Mm -hmm. Now they know he's not there. <laughs> so they can steal What will they, they do? <laughs> now, some counties fear the uko. Mm -hmm. Now, they know the person who will be there is not Ohuko. Mm -hmm. It may be tougher or less tough, All right. but going by the recruitment that just flopped, mm -hmm. I, I don't feel well. <laughs> 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 it's 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 but the thing here is, eh, mm -hmm. the mistake that we've made as a, a constitutional mistake, Ouko suggested that uh, the succession plan should be very well outlined so yes. that his successor will be found before the term expires. Now we don't have one. Some companies cannot declare their dividends. They cannot hold AGMs. Remember, these dividends will go to pockets of Kenyans, mm -hmm. which in turn they will spend and improve. The economy. Hii mm pesa -hmm. sasa imelala mahali. Na unajua pesa ikilala mahali kwa kampuni, wakubwa akili zao zinaanzaga kuharibika. Mm -hmm. So, this money may get lost. Again now. And no one will account for it. Yeah, no one will account for it. Imagine size spending knowing no one is auditing you. Kwanza governors unawajua. So uh, we need to run and... Uh, okay, oh, oh, but before, before, before uh, Ouko retired, he, he said there are... Uh, loopholes in the law that needs to be looked into and i think that is what uh, job is trying to say now these policies uh, uh, don't you think this is one of the things that should have been in the bbi because the, we we uh, unless the president appoints and then kamasaya likata we don't know why but uh, we s since august we don't have a auditor general i you've said about the bbi it is a report that we are, some of us are yet to read. I've read it, I've not said I've not read it. Mm -hmm. I've read it. But the BBI addresses some of these issues. Mm -hmm. About the Auditor General, you know, the office is still functional. Mm -hmm. It is the head that is not there. We hope that that position is filled so fast so that the country moves. Mm -hmm. But in terms of addressing the issues, the, the loopholes in our law, I hope that this thing we're calling BBI addresses it. Because there are serious, serious loopholes, for instance, in terms of procurement. You find these people in government positions, the governors, mm -hmm. they are awarding tenders to, them, to themselves, or through proxies. Mm -hmm. These are some of the things that we really need to look into. Because you find governors have paid tenders that were done by proxies. They have, in, in essence, they have paid themselves. Mm -hmm. and. If you want to know that there is a serious problem, go to the counties. Follow how payments are done. If you don't know anyone in the county, don't do a tender that is advertised by the county because you will not be paid. They have made it that difficult. So these are some of the loopholes that we really need to address if we are to move as a country. Okay. Because without that, the issue of corruption will be history. Yes. All right, uh, as, we, as we wind up with Felix, it's very paramount that we have Auditor General because we want to see how much money was allocated to this project or to this county and how much was used and what remains. We don't have this man. What do you think? What I think right now what's happening in the county governments is jubilation. People are happy there because <laughs> there's no one to put them on check. County, now b being a governor is the best job in Kenya. You can never have. Mm -hmm. It's true, right? Mm -hmm. And now that uh, when Oko was there, they were getting money. Mm -hmm. Right now, they are getting more money. What, do, what, what can they do? What, what, what I just suggest is that uh, the government gets us a new Auditor General as fast as possible. Because right now, we are having a crisis. Mm -hmm. And uh, the more we have this, the more we lose money, and the more we keep suffering. Mm -hmm. So what, what I feel is that, what I just feel is that uh, the faster we get the Auditor General, the better is it for us Kenyans. All right, I'm taking your final comments uh, coming this way. Uh, 
What would be your final comments very fast? We have less than four minutes. My final comment, I, th I think it ge it's a general one to the, to, 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 to the government mm -hmm. and more so to the agricultural sector. I just pray that the government mm -hmm. hears our plight as youths in this sector mm -hmm. and uh, thinks of employing more youths from now going forward because we are learning and we are outside here. We are, do we are getting into jobs we never, mm -hmm. we never trained for. So I just request the government to find better ways of getting youths into those sectors. Uh, all right. Uh, what would be your final comments? Thank you. My final comment is to, to all Kenyans. Mm -hmm. We have a beautiful country. This country is for all of us. The only problem with all the, uh, the things we're seeing, the unemployment, our main problem today is corruption. And corruption is enabled by both of us. If we can be able to fight corruption, you and me, Kenya will be a very good country for all of us, for our generations, for our generation and generations to come. Okay. That is my last one. All right, Job. Well, my last uh, comment, uh, since the topic was on the economy and the youth, mm -hmm. the youths need to forget something called the government. Mm -hmm. And even as a country, we need to forget something called the government. The government, by definition, is legislature, judiciary, and executive. But all these people are from our villages. Mm -hmm. So as a country, we need to sit, reflect. The government is not corrupt. Our parents, mm -hmm. our brothers, our sisters are corrupt. Those who work in those offices, as youths, as citizens, we need to look out for those people, pull them out, and uh, now the law should allow us to punish them. Because once we fight, uh, once we end corruption as a nation, the big four will flow. The pot will flow. Tourism will flow. And the youths should change their mentality about employment. Mm -hmm. the information about that is all over. Yeah, thank you. All right, thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming and for all your comments uh, this morning. I'm sure our audience back home, you have uh, learned something. They have been my guest, uh, Felix, so, uh, where? where he's an agriculturist and uh, still a student. We have Thomas Obare, he's an economist as well. And here I have uh, Job Mugira, he's a financial or a research economist thank you so much for coming and thank you so much back home for keeping us company now in the next segment beatrice maitha cecilia wanjiro and andrew kaberu be given uh, the eh, cakes the new year cakes i hear so so valentine will be here she, she will tell you more about uh, what will be happening my name is deriva hillary enjoy y254 in the morning or in the morning program